Hey friends, Chris here through the prism of Chrism. I hope you've enjoyed our series on Watch Your Mouth. This is the last broadcast on that. We've been talking about duct taping it shut if we need to. Psalm 141 and verse 3 says, Set a watch, O Lord, over my mouth. Now as I close this, I want to just share some odds and ends, 10 points that I want you to consider. Number one, if you want to be heard, speak the word. Everybody wants to be heard. Somebody says, why won't anybody listen to me? Well, why should they? You don't speak negative. You don't toot your own horn. You don't get loud. But if you speak God's word, you'll be heard. Matthew 8 and 8 says, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Heaven hears that. Number two, it's not enough to talk the talk. You have to walk the walk. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 4 and 20 that the kingdom of God is not in word, but is in power. And then in chapter two, he said, not enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. You know, when we get to heaven, God is not going to say, well said, good and faithful servant. You talked a good talk. No, it's well done, not well said. And then number three, what you say actually is what you get. Always question that statement, even though I've said it many times, but I have a scripture for that. Numbers 14 and 28, as truly as I live, says the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. In other words, by your words, you're justified. By your words, you are condemned. So you need to be careful what you're speaking because what you say is what you get. Number four, put a sock in it. I mean, sometimes you just have to have to put a sock in it. As much as I appreciate the Bill of Rights and our right to free speech, sometimes people need a divine gag order. You know, in Titus 1 and verse 10, Paul said, there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, listen, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake or for money's sake. So you have to watch Watch what you say because we can lead people astray. Put a sock in it. And then number five, don't allow your mouth to outrun your mind. You know, Peter had that problem. He's impetuous. When they were up on the mountain and Jesus was transfigured and Moses and Elijah were standing by his side, Peter uh, said, should we build a tabernacle, for one for you, Lord, one for Elijah and Moses? And listen to Mark 9 and 6. It says, for he wist not what to say. In other words, he didn't know what to say. Well, if you don't know what to say, don't say anything. Robert Benchley said, relying on my uh, command of language, I said nothing. You know, if you can't improve on the silence, don't say a thing. Put a sock in it. And then number six, if words are like arrows, then words need aim. You don't take a shotgun and just indiscriminately point and shoot. You don't speak in generalities. There needs to be an aim, a direction. When David went up to knock Goliath down, he first spoke to him and then he threw the stone. And the late Billy Joe Dougherty said, the rock followed the trajectory of his confession. In other words, he spoke, here comes the rock, and the giant fell. And then number seven, the faith tongue cannot be a forked tongue. Where'd that word start? Well, when the Europeans came and settled, the Native Americans, they gave them all kinds of promises, and yet they broke all of their promises. So, so listen, you need, to, you need to say what you mean and mean what you say. The faith tongue cannot be a forked tongue. And then number eight, most people need vaccinated for foot-in-mouth disease. Have you had your shots? Well, the Bible's the best vaccine for foot-in-mouth problems. Listen, Peter had that. That's why Jesus washed Peter's feet, because he's always sticking his foot in his mouth. And then number nine, the mouth must move before the mountain will move. He said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed. So you got to move your mouth. And then he said, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Not what he said, past tense, but what he saith, as if to say he's still speaking his confession at the moment that the mountain moves. Praise God. And then my tenth point, and I know I've shared a lot today, and maybe you have to repeat this and play it back. But number ten, one case where you need to come under law is in the law of kindness. You know the Proverbs 31 woman, the model, exemplary wife and mom. Listen to what it says in verse 26. She opens her mouth mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. We need to be legalistic on obeying that law. In other words, she wouldn't allow anything out of her mouth that were damage or insult or hurt another person. And that's what we ultimately have to do with this series. I hope you've enjoyed it. Watch your mouth and uh, be sure to tune in Monday. We're starting a new series. It's going to be a good one. And uh, thanks for being with us. Like if you like, comment if this series has meant anything to you and we'll see you tomorrow.